Coming up this week, ChatGPT Atlas enters the browser wars, but are AI browsers doomed? Claude Skills gives your AI agents new superpowers, Pinterest and Spotify lead the fight back against AI slop, and a new tool that will help you to build prototypes that look exactly like your product. Stay tuned for all of that and more, and as always, if you enjoy the weekly briefing, hit the subscribe and the like button. So after months of rumors, this week OpenAI finally confirmed that it was building a browser with the release of ChatGPT Atlas, a new Chromium-based browser that does pretty much what other competitors like Dia and Perplexity's Comet do with built-in agentic capabilities and an AI assistant. During the demo, the company showcased use cases, including updating to-do items in Linear from a Google Doc and finding recipes online and automatically adding these into an Instacart basket ready to check out. But what is the strategy behind this new release from OpenAI? Speaking on her blog, OpenAI's new CEO of applications, Fiji Sumo, says that the ultimate vision here is to create an AI-powered operating system with ChatGPT at the core. She said, over time, we see ChatGPT evolving to become the operating system for your life, a fully connected hub that helps you to manage your day-to-day -day and achieve your long-term goals. The name of the browser certainly reflects this strategy with ChatGPT front and center. But does this mean that we'll get other ChatGPT branded products in the future? Could we get ChatGPT Docs or ChatGPT Sheets or ChatGPT Slides? The iconography across its consumer product suite is certainly consistent, as you can see here, with each of OpenAI's new products using the same logo outline. But if ChatGPT's brand is diluted across each of these products, this risks confusing users who just want to download ChatGPT in the App Store. The feedback so far has been pretty mixed, with some saying that the release proves that OpenAI is excellent at product, and others bemoaning the fact that they are unable to access content that OpenAI deems problematic. A future where the browser decides what content you can and can't see for your own safety doesn't seem particularly open for a company with that word literally in its name. And the security risks of AI browsers are also very real. This week, Brave published new research on the vulnerabilities it's found in Comet and other AI browsers, which can enable hostile actors to inject malicious prompts into the browser without a user knowing. The bigger question though is, does anyone really care enough to switch to Atlas or any other AI browser? According to the latest data from StatCounter, since the launch of Deer and Perplexity Comet earlier this year, Google Chrome's market share has actually increased up from 64% to 75% year on year. Now these figures may ultimately get revised down as often happens with data from StatCounter, but they clearly show the struggle that any challenger has to dethrone Google. With an install base of 800 million plus users of ChatGPT though, OpenAI is perhaps the best company to find out whether that's possible. Elsewhere this week, if you're looking for new ways to vibe code prototypes, then Google Studio has updated its AI Studio to incorporate new vibe coding capabilities. You can now use Google Studio to incorporate generative AI models like VO3.1, Nano Banana, text-to-speech, and other models all in one single interface. Google's Logan Kilpatrick says that more integration features like database setups, file storage, and authentication are in the pipeline. And here's an example of it one-shotting a Windows simulator in 89 seconds. And speaking of web-based vibe coding, Anthropic's Claude shipped a few changes of its own this week. Claude code is now available on the web, which means that engineers can delegate tasks to AI agents when they're on the move, and this past week also saw the release of Claude Skills. Claude Skills are reusable snippets of functionality that you can upload to Claude to give it extra specialist powers when it's completing specific tasks. And Claude Skills are the topic of this week's knowledge series over on Substack. In this piece, I explain what Claude Skills are, with a breakdown of the core technologies involved, as well as a step-by-step -step guide on how you can use these skills day to day. Using this skill, for example, I was able to upload a PRD and then watch as Notion and Claude created a database of 42 user stories, complete with acceptance criteria and tasks for Claude Code to then implement. This was slightly terrifying to watch, but impressive at the same time. So if you're interested in learning more about what Claude skills are and how they can transform your everyday workflows, then check out that knowledge series over on Substack. Now let's take a look at some tools you can use and we'll start with a product called Alloy which describes itself as prototyping for product managers. The value proposition here is pretty simple, which is that it allows you to create prototypes that look and feel exactly like your product. This works as a browser extension that will allow you to open it up on any page of your product. And after you capture the page, you'll instantly see a preview and can then start prototyping. So if you're looking for quick and easy ways to start prototyping, then Alloy could be worth a look. The next product is something called Jack and Jill, 
And this is a two-way marketplace for finding a job, except that the market is entirely managed by two different AI agents, Jack and Jill. Job seekers have an in-depth phone call with Jack who finds out your skill set and then scours the web on your behalf to find jobs that might be a good fit. Jill, on the other hand, then acts as the hiring manager, getting to grips with what the company is looking for. Jack and Jill compare notes and ultimately match the right people with the right jobs. This week, the company raised $20 million. And so if you're looking for new ways to augment your job search or hiring process, then Jack and Jill could be worth checking out. And the final tool for this week is something called Nemo. So this lets you pull all of your productivity tools and AI agents into one single intelligent canvas. So essentially, you can have your Gmail, Google Sheets, Notion, and other apps all in one workspace, and then use AI across each of these different products to perform different actions. So if you're looking for new ways to manage your AI workflows, then Nemo could be worth checking out. Now let's take a look at some data and trends from the week. And we'll start with news from Wikipedia, who say that human page views have dropped 8% year on year, citing generative AI as one of the factors driving decline. This could have a significant impact on its value proposition. With fewer visits to Wikipedia, fewer volunteers may grow and enrich the content. And this shift has prompted companies to explore new marketing strategies to reach the users they've lost to LMs. A new piece by The Information this week says that despite a drop in search traffic, revenue drops aren't necessarily following suit. In this piece, seven companies were interviewed and one of them said that AI traffic from tools like ChatGPT and Perplexity now make up 10% of overall traffic, with visitors who do come from these channels proving to be higher quality than those who came from previous organic search. This isn't enough to offset the losses though, and has led to experimentation with new channels and formats. Since AI search prioritizes things like YouTube videos and Reddit threads, companies are increasingly focusing their SEO or GEO efforts on these channels and formats instead. Over time, this could spell disaster for those channels. So if you think about it, if Reddit becomes a place full of AI slop where companies use AI to generate fake reviews and commentaries to rank higher in AI search engines, then the Reddit moat itself evaporates entirely. And speaking of AI slop, Pinterest says that generative AI content now makes up 57% of all online material. And this has led them to ship a new set of toggles that allow users to toggle generative AI features on and off. Users can decide on a category by category basis whether or not they want to see AI generated content in their feed. And other companies are also following suit. Spotify has shipped its own set of filters to reduce or eliminate AI slop by identifying AI generated songs and removing them from its recommendation engine. And this week, it confirmed that it was working with artists to give them control about how their music is used in training AI models. A spokesperson said that the new features would be built fairly with artists' permission, presented to fans as a voluntary add-on, rather than an inescapable funnel of AI slop. So here's the current state of AI slop filters across different social products. And you can see that Pinterest is leading the way with user controls, including direct toggles and AI content labeling. It'll be interesting to see if other products follow suit. One company that is all in on AI though is Netflix. And this week, the company reported its latest earnings with revenue growth of 17% year on year. According to the company, some of the product changes that helped drive this growth included an updated TV UI which is now on 85% of TV devices, a new conversational search that helps users discover titles easily, and generative AI-powered localization and translation features, which it says boosted retention. Their CEO used the opportunity to clearly state his position on the use of generative AI, saying that the company is going, quote, all in on it. Other CEOs share this sentiment, with Anthropic CEO saying that 90% of the code at the company is now written by AI, but he says engineers will remain crucial. Claude is writing 90% of the code. What that means usually is you need just as many software engineers. You actually might need more because then there can be more leverage, he said. An Uber exec also echoed this sentiment, saying that he expects the number of drivers to actually increase as autonomous vehicles hit the road. But one company that seemingly doesn't share this view is Amazon. And this week, according to the New York Times at least, leaked internal reports show that Amazon plans to replace more than 500,000 of its staff with robots. And finally this week, while roles like engineering and robotics are ripe for AI disruption, one of the more controversial use cases for AI outsourcing is financial investing. This week, a new benchmark called Alpha Arena decided to put AI agents' investment capabilities to the test. For this benchmark test, each model has been given $10,000 to invest in cryptocurrencies with the test running until November the 3rd. And as you can see here, China's Quen3 and DeepSeek are way out in front, 
with GPT ranked bottom just below Gemini. And on that note, I'll leave it there for this week. Thanks very much for listening and watching. I'll be back next week with another briefing.